70 years, past 70 years and much more. We just want to thank you for your goodness and your faithfulness. And Lord, you are more than worthy. You are more than worthy of all our praises and all that we can ever sing.
praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So good to see all of you this morning. And uh, Pastor Marcus and Sister Sunny, they are with the mission team to North Thailand and Myanmar. So let's stand and pray for them, that the Lord will grant them good success. Hallelujah. Kurama shakata ramaya handi. Ramaya handi roma shakata ramaya handi. Shukurumu kata ramaya handi roma shandi. Hallelujah. Andara. Father, as a church, Lord, Penang first assembly of God. Lord, we uphold the mission team to North Thailand and Myanmar. We thank you for Sister Sunny, Pastor Marcus, and the entire team. We thank you, Lord, that you are using them, Lord, so mightily. Lord, the news that come in during the week, O oh God, we hear of good success, Lord. The baptism of the Holy Spirit, salvation, Lord, that is happening. Miracles, O oh God, hallelujah, as in the book of Acts. Father, we just give thanks, Lord. Today, Father, such a special day, Lord, where people come in for services. Father, we pray for your strong anointing to be upon your word, Lord. It breaks every yoke of bondage, Lord, and it sets people free to know you, to love you, and to serve you. So we thank you, O oh God, that the church, Lord, in North Thailand, Lord, it will continue to multiply and multiply. That the good news will continue, Lord, to be furthered, Father, into boundaries, beyond, Lord, boundaries, O oh God, and into the land of Myanmar. We believe, Father, for good things and a Joshua report. Father, we just continue to lift them, Father, even as, Lord, the mission trip will end, Father. Very soon, we ask, Father, for your blessing upon them as they come back as well. We give thanks, Father, for this team. And Lord, all glory to you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and amen. Give the Lord a hand and continue standing as we make our confession. I am who God says I am. Amen. Let's do it again. I am who God says I am. I have what God says I have. And I can do what God says I can do. Amen. Do you believe that? Amen. Hallelujah. And love God. Love people. Love life. Hallelujah. Let's do it again. Love God. Love people. Love life. God is good. Amen. And amen. Please be seated. Right, to follow up on the uh, announcements, next Sunday is such a very special day. So all of you, again, a reminder, please do not ask one another, Oi, am I invited or not? You are all invited. Faithful members, do come and celebrate with the church after service for a special lunch at the covered car park. There will be three buffet lines. So don't worry, yeah? food will be served to you very quickly. And just follow the ushers' directions as they direct you to join the queues. Okay? So time to practice fruit of the Holy Spirit for dessert. Huh? Fruit of the Holy Spirit Be patient Enjoy the fellowship with one another And the ushers And um, you will be served well Okay And remember souvenir items They are on sale beginning today Also practice the fruit of the Holy Spirit Patience Because the people helping at the counters they are young adults and youths, okay? So, reach out to each other, enjoy one another's company in the, the body of Christ. Most importantly, 
Remember, as Pastor Jeremiah mentioned, 10 a.m. and 7 p.m., English with Mandarin interpretation. So that will be next week. Now for the 7 p.m. service, when you come in, please fill up the front sections as you normally do because I hope you understand the Hokkien people, they are elderly and they need to occupy the back section, especially near the toilet area. So as you come in for the 7 p.m. service next week, Move forward as you normally do and fill the front sections first. Reverend Ong is a very good speaker and I believe the church will be blessed as we listen to the message on our 70th anniversary. Right? So all of you come 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. next week. Okay? Right? Give me a wave if you're coming. Hallelujah. Yeah, I believe all of you will come. Praise the Lord. Thank you. So, thank you musicians and singers. Appreciate you. Right, this morning, I bring you a message. Just thinking about the message, what is expedient, what is necessary at this point of time in the world that we are living in. And I thought that as Christians, as believers, we should understand how to live and how to live in God's wisdom to be successful. Let us pray. Father, I just give thanks, Lord. You have desired that your children live well. Father, in this world so full of stress and demands. So, Father, as we look into your word, encourage us, O oh God. Stimulate our senses, O oh God, spiritual senses, that we may understand, Lord, how to walk with you at such a time, even as this. Challenging times, difficult times, perilous times. But Father, we thank you that when we walk in your ways and in your wisdom, we are safe. And we give thanks, Lord, as you teach us how to walk in this world. And we thank you for your word this morning. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, I would like to entitle my message, Living in God's Wisdom. As you know, the Word of God says that the knowledge of God brings wisdom. Right? So how do we have or acquire knowledge of God's Word? And it is simply by reading the Word of God. Today, we have so many types of translations. Some translations, they are so easy to read and it can be a little bit humorous as well. And if you get hold of the translation called The Message, it is like your neighbour talking to you. So, if you say, I cannot understand the Word of God, it is too difficult for me. Know that when you read the Word of God, the Holy Spirit in you encourages you, enlightens you that the Word of God is simple and that it can be easily understood. So if you find King James Version or New King James Version too difficult for you, get the simpler versions. Okay? The Amplified Bible, the Message, the... New Living Translation, everything. Um, all these easier versions so that you can read and acquire the knowledge of the Lord. Who God is, how He is like, how He works in your life and what He does in this world. So reading the Word brings the knowledge of God. And as we read, we must 
continually allow the Word of God to be in our minds. We need to chew on the Word of God. We need to meditate on the Word of God more than thinking about, oh, what shall I eat huh? later for lunch? What shall I have later for dinner? Where shall I go to enjoy myself? Right? Spend time meditating on the Word of God, what you have read, think about it, and ask the Lord, the Holy Spirit, to illuminate the Word of God and to apply it into your lives. So the Holy Spirit brings revelation. And when the Holy Spirit shows how you can apply the Word of God to your life, the application of the Word, suddenly it is like a bell ringing. Huh? It is like a bulb just lit up in your life. And you will say, oh, is that so? This is how I should apply the Word of God in this situation. So wisdom is knowledge of the Word of God applied. So how do you gain wisdom? As I said, read. It starts with reading. And when we read the Word of God, and when we meditate on the Word of God, the Bible says that our mind is renewed. So we need to renew our minds with the Word of God. Because many things in the world that we see, we watch, it comes into our minds, and these things may be helpful to you to live as an individual, but it is not the Word of God. It does not tell you how you can apply to live a successful life. Romans 12.2 says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world. So what we see on television, the news that we hear daily, it is the pattern of this world. And yet, the Word of God says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds. We cannot be renewed in our minds if we do not have the Word of God in our hearts. And then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing and perfect will. So to understand the working of God in your life and how you should conduct your life, and to understand what God is doing in this world so that we have a clear understanding how to live in this world of stress. We need to have a renewed mind. So the Word renews our minds and it allows us to tap into the wisdom of God. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 4, 6 to 10 says, now this is the Apostle Paul talking to the Corinthians. And what did he say? He said, my message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words. So the word of God is very simple. It is with a demonstration of the Spirit's power so that your faith might not rest on human wisdom, but on God's power. Again, we see the difference and the comparison between human wisdom and the wisdom of God. I'm sure this morning, as you are listening in and hearing the Word of God, you would say, yes, I choose God's wisdom. Because the wisdom... As Paul says, it will disappear one day. Verse 6 says, We do, however, speak a message of wisdom among the mature, but not the wisdom of this age or 
of the rulers of this age, which are coming to nothing. Right now, we are having a great war in the Middle East between Israel and Gaza. So we listen in, and I do as well, watch television about the news that is happening. But what does the Word of God say is the wisdom of this age, no matter how much they try. The rulers of this age, you know who they are. <laughs> the big shots <laughs> that seem to be commanding the world situation. The Bible says who are coming to nothing, zero. No, we declare God's wisdom a mystery that has been hidden and that God destined for our glory before time began. Do you know that God destined and when you were called, He wants to put His wisdom in your heart and in your mind so that you know how to live this life well on earth. God is concerned with your living right now in this world, on earth, not just for eternity. So God destined for our glory. He destined and it is His will that you walk well, understanding the Word of God. So God's wisdom is totally different from the wisdom of the world. So we have to align our thoughts with God's Word. Our minds need to be renewed. And all the promises and blessings of God will come into our lives. We live well when our minds are renewed. So how do you walk in wisdom then? After gaining wisdom, how do you walk in wisdom? We must walk understanding God's perspective for your life. God's perspective, looking at things from God's direction. God asked the Lord, what should I do? God, what will you do? That is God's perspective. Proverbs 1 says, The word of God is for gaining wisdom and instruction, for understanding words of insight. Insight. To have insight into a matter not just on the surface, but to understand a matter and how to handle a matter well. For receiving instruction in prudent behaviour, correct behaviour, level-headed behaviour, doing what is right and just and fair. So it is God's will that as believers and as Christians, we meet out judgment, we meet to our brothers and sisters what is right, what is just, and what is fair. And even to your family members as well, your children, right? Uh, when your children, they say, oh, daddy, not fair, and daddy, not fair. Uh, you are siding with my sister. So, as parents, Christian parents, raising children, we need the wisdom of God to raise our children in the fear of the Lord. So the fastest way to renew our minds is to agree with God. You know, as a young believer, there are many things that you read in the Word of God that you cannot agree with. For example, forgive your enemy. How? I'm not in the wrong. That person attacked me, why should I forgive? So, 
the more you read the Word of God, the more you walk with Him through the years, you gain God's perspective because of a renewed mind. Proverbs 11.2 says, When pride comes, then comes shame. But with the humble is wisdom. God wants us to humble ourselves. In any situation that we encounter, we always consider God's word upon that situation. Why is it that so many people do not seek wisdom? Because they do not agree with God's word. They do not think that God's way is the correct way. Because walking God's way takes humility. It is a breaking down of yourself, your inner self, and just giving and surrendering yourself to God's dealing as you connect with the person or people, especially those that you do not like. Walking God's way is not easy. But nevertheless, let me tell you, it is truly walking in God's wisdom. So which would you want to choose today? Solomon in Proverbs, he personifies, he sees wisdom as a woman calling to you and beckoning everyone to come and listen. This is what is said in Proverbs 1. Proverbs 1, 20 to 23. Wisdom calls aloud outside. She raises her voice in the open squares. She cries out in the chief concourses. At the openings of the gates in the city, she speaks her words. How long, you simple ones, will you love simplicity? For scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. Turn at my rebuke. Surely I will pour out my spirit on you. I will make my words known to you. Now the key word here is turn. 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 Repent. Turn from your own selfish thinking and turn to the word of God and when you turn to the Word of God with the work of the Holy Spirit in your lives, you will see things from God's perspective and you will gain wisdom. So wisdom is always, as a woman personified, is always calling out to us. God wants us to walk His ways Will you walk his way this morning? Will you listen to him and say, Lord, I will turn from my ways and I will walk your way? Do you know that walking in wisdom leads to abundant living? We want abundant life. We want abundant living. But we say, Lord, let it let me do it my way. But still, Lord, you bless me abundantly. Now, it is not in God's truth and principle to do it your way. When we desire abundant living, we have to walk in God's ways. Proverbs 3, 16 to 18 says, Length of days is in her right hand. In her left hand, riches and honour. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, 
and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to those who take hold of her, and happy are all who retain her. Such a beautiful proverb. God promises tree of life, healing. God promises health, length of days. You do not have health, you cannot live long. <laughs> length of days, and length of days with health to enjoy God's goodness. We believe that as Christians. And happy are all who retain her. And if you keep the word of God in your heart, you prosper. Proverbs 10, 22 says, The blessings of the Lord makes one rich, and he adds no sorrow to it. You know, when God prospers you, there is no sorrow. You do not suffer from your riches. You know, the world, many people are rich, but they are not happy. They do not rejoice. Ultimately, there comes a stage when riches, when fame can become a burden to them. But with the Lord, when the Lord prospers you, there is your life flourishes, your life overflows. The blessing of God overflows in your life and touches other people. And that's so wonderful. And it begins by living in God's wisdom. Amen. Proverbs 2, 11 to 15 says, Discretion will protect you and understanding will guard you. Wisdom will save you from the ways of wicked men, from men whose words are perverse, who have left the straight paths to walk in dark ways, whose paths are crooked and who are devious in their ways. You know, this proverb 11 to 15 is frightening. It tells you that there is sin there is darkness and there is deviousness on the other side. Which side would you want to choose? But sometimes, as we are living in this world, the dark side will encroach and come upon us. Let me give you an example. Many of you know that in August, I got stung by the Aedes mosquito, right? And I appreciate all your prayers because I recovered very quickly. I had a double dose of infection. Perhaps the second one, I don't know where I got it from. So I was hospitalized for nine days. So... A few days later, after I recovered, I was at the Bible study, uh, the Zoom Bible study, which I urge all of you to join in every Tuesday. So the caller, after Bible study, I received a call. I do not know why I answered the call. It's very odd. I remember, we remember on Tuesday, Sister Gurley shared Tuesday morning prayer meeting, 9 a.m., how she got conned by a scammer. Huh? And she could laugh about it. Huh? That is living in God's wisdom, having the joy of the Lord. So, because I think the call came through WhatsApp and the icon given was a DG1 icon. So, I thought, okay, better answer. So, I answered and the 
voice came, you know, um, is this your full name? Is this your IC number? I said, yes, yes, yes. Okay. So I was a bit drowsy because I just came out from the hospital a few days ago. Then, um, okay, all in Malay. Huh? Crazy, I don't know why I, I kept the call on. And then the caller said, I'll give you two OTP numbers. Uh, I know a little bit about OTP. Right? Now you scroll down. I say, I don't know how to scroll. You know, you scroll down from the top. Hurry, you know, because uh, the, you must do it quickly. So I listened and I scrolled down and I had the number. And he said, can you give me the number? You know why I gave him the number? Because sometimes when I have to do things or do payment, I do not, I need someone younger next to me, okay? I'm not that old, okay? I need someone younger next to me to key in. So I often read to them my OTP number. But, you know, there's some, the person is someone I trust and standing or sitting next to me. So I gave the caller my two OTP numbers. And uh, then he said, oh, this is your bank account. Uh, can you... The minute I heard bank, suddenly I woke up. I said, bank? I said, no, 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 no. Uh, uh, no problem. I don't want anything. I don't want anything. And I quickly put down the handphone. The man, he texted me two texts through WhatsApp and he scolded me. Can you imagine the scammer scolding me? Instead of I scolding the scammer, right? So I'm telling you, the world today, you better learn how to walk in God's wisdom. When we read the Word of God, because we have the Holy Spirit in us, the Holy Spirit can warn us, it gives us discretion, and it can tell us when we are moving into danger. And I believe the Holy Spirit cautioned me. And I thank God that that week, there was much to be done. Report going to the DG because he was so angry, he said, I will stop uh, your calls. And true enough, my handphone got jammed and I couldn't call out. So I had to visit DG, make a report, etc., etc. But I thank God that He saved me, really saved me. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand. If not all my money, not that I have much or that I have too little, will be gone. And uh, praise the Lord. God saved me. Matthew 24, 12 says, Sin will be rampant everywhere and the love of many will grow cold. This is Jesus' warning to his listeners and his disciples. We must know that sin will be rampant everywhere and the love of many will grow cold. This is the world that we are living in. Let's look at the picture that I found. A very sad state of affairs. Nathan was promised a job in customer service in Thailand. Instead, he found himself in Cambodia being ordered to defraud strangers online and beaten for refusing. So it is so sad. Let us be alert to the sin outside. You know, after the incident, I shared again at the 9 a.m. prayer meeting about God's hedge around His people. 
And I found in Lamentations 3, 32 to 33, it says, it's not on the screen, it says this, Though the Lord causes grief, yet He will show compassion according to the multitude of His mercies. For He does not afflict without purpose, nor unnecessarily grieve the children of men. This is what Jeremiah, Prophet Jeremiah says as he went through so much trouble. As you know, Jeremiah, Prophet Jeremiah was put in prison in stocks and he was ill-treated by the enemy. And he says this, Though the Lord causes grief, as children of God, we might go through danger, we might go through grief. And the Bible says, Yet God watches over us as we go through difficulty. He shows compassions and His mercies are in multitudes. He does not afflict without purpose nor unnecessarily grieve the children of men. It is not God's desire that you suffer. And yet, when Satan asks the Lord, like in the book of Job, let me taunt and let me torment Job, and God says, go ahead for a season. And when Job was tormented, God was there. Satan could not have full reign over anyone's life, the believer's life. So God, when He allows the enemy to wreak havoc, a little havoc in your life, know that God's hand is always upon you and He watches over you because God does not allow affliction without a purpose. When God allows affliction in your life, it is for your good. So the wisdom of Solomon. Let's take a look at the wisdom of Solomon. Now, when Solomon offered, when he became king and he offered a thousand burnt offerings to the Lord at Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream and asked him, What shall I give you? And Solomon replied, I am but a little child. At 30 years of age, he ruled Israel. I do not know how to go out or come in, and your servant is in the midst of your people whom you have chosen, a great people too numerous to be numbered or counted. Therefore, give to your servant an understanding heart to judge your people, that I may discern between good and evil, for who is able to judge this great people of yours? So, this request pleased the Lord. And what did God say? Behold, I have done according to your words. See, I have given you a wise and understanding heart. So we ask from the Lord. Ask from the Lord. And God will give you a wise and understanding heart like King Solomon. So that there has not been anyone like you before you or shall any like you Arise after you, and I have also given you what you have not asked, both riches and honour, so that there shall not be anyone like you among the kings all your days. So if you walk in my ways to keep my statutes and my commandments, as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your days. So you see once again, as in the book of Proverbs, when we ask for the wisdom of God, God 
adds together with that wisdom both riches and honour and length of days and health. That is what our God is like. And that is what God wants to give to you. And you know, let's look at the picture, the wisdom of God in Solomon. To conduct and to carry out justice for two women, one child lost because the mother, the baby died when the mother smothered the baby in sleep. And um, the baby was alive, the other baby was alive, and the two mothers came. Two mothers, one baby dead, the other baby alive. Whose baby is it? So you find out, as you read the Word of God, that Solomon said, divide the baby into half. Give one to one woman, give half to one woman, give half to the other. And you know that as a mother's compassion arises, the real mother said, give the baby to the other woman. And it's so easy to know who the real mother is. And Solomon says, give this child back to the real mother. Amen. Time is running short. The Word of God tells us to build our lives upon the rock. Let's look at the picture. This morning, where is and who is the foundation of our lives. When you go out from here, can you say that, Lord, you are my foundation. My faith is built on you. Matthew 7, 24 to 27. Therefore, anyone who hears these words of mine and put them into practice, when you hear, you have to put into practice and you are wise because you built your house on the rock. And when the rains come, the streams rose, the winds blew and beat against that house, it did not fall because it had its foundations on the rock. And anyone, everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice, is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The wind, the rains came down, the winds, the streams rose, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. So as I said, we are living in dangerous, perilous times. Wars and rumours of wars. Who do we look to? The news on TV? The political leaders? Human wisdom? The Word of God is able to carry you through in the world that we are living in. The Word of God in our hearts will strengthen our lives because the Word of God is likened to a rock. And Jesus says, He is the rock. So do you want to build your life on the rock of Jesus today. Let me end by saying this. If you live in God's wisdom and living in God's wisdom is living in anticipation 
of his coming. Such times that we are living in, we need the wisdom of God. And the wisdom of God, when you read the word of God, it includes anticipating the coming of Jesus Christ. Ephesians 5 says, Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making most of every opportunity because the days are evil. So the Israeli Prime Minister declared war with Hamas after the militant group launched a massive terror attack on the Gaza Strip, Saturday, 7th October. When will it end? It seems like it's just starting, isn't it? Forces are surrounding the Gaza Strip. Will it escalate into war that includes nations, superpowers? We do not know. Let me read to you Matthew 25, 1-6. That we may be alert and walk in God's wisdom. Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lambs and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lambs and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lambs. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Let me have the picture. Are you wait, awaiting the Lord's coming? Such times... Dangerous times, the scriptures record the sayings of Jesus in Matthew 24. And immediately the next chapter, Matthew 25, Jesus gave the parable of the ten virgins. So if we read Matthew, we understand that the follow-up to such dangerous times and evil days is the coming of the Lord to grant us redemption and hope. So are we looking forward to the coming of the Lord Jesus? Isaiah 28, 16 and 29 says, And this is what the Sovereign Lord says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone for a sure foundation. The one who relies on it will never be stricken with panic. All this also comes from the Lord Almighty, whose plan is wonderful, whose wisdom is magnificent. So there is so much hope for the church. So much rejoicing in the midst of evil in this world. So what will you choose, brothers and sisters, today? Will you choose the wisdom of God and to walk in it? Or choose to believe what the world is telling you through social media. God, in His wisdom, when we walk in His wisdom, we know how to live and live in this world because the Holy Spirit empowers us to live well. Amen. Let's stand and let's sing the song.
the church. Okay. For there is a beautiful rock, the precious cornerstone for a sure foundation. Let's sing the song. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. Build in my for life. You. Lord, can we lift our hands to the Lord? Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you that your word is so true. It lays bare, Father. It shows who we are in Christ Jesus. That we have everything, Lord, your abundance when we choose you and when we choose to build our lives on the firm foundation of Jesus Christ. And Lord, as we choose you, Father, we walk in your wisdom, we walk in your power, we walk in your authority. And Father, we just give thanks that we are overcomers in Christ Jesus. Lord, over every situation, Father, over the many things that are happening in this world, yet to, we are children of the living God. We are called out to walk a life that is different. 
and we thank you, O God. Your word says that if we lack wisdom, let us ask from you, Father, because you give generously to all without reproach, and it shall be given to us. And Lord, we thank you that we receive by faith this morning, Father, your wisdom as we ask from you. Father, for every situation in our lives, for every relationship, Lord, in our workplace, Father, in our homes, Lord, we walk by faith and not by sight. And we thank you, O God. We are no longer driven or tossed by the wind, but we build our house on the solid rock of Jesus Christ this morning. We thank you, O God, that you are so good that you empower us this morning. And we thank you that your presence be with us, Father, as we leave this place. We give thanks in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody say, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand. And 2 Corinthians 13 and verse 14, May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. God bless you.